Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. Now, we're doing a series on why confession works. Now, let me reiterate that most of the time when you talk about confession, people are, think about confessing their sins. Well, thank God we should confess our sins if we sin, because He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But yet, we're talking about saying the same thing that God said in His Word about you and about your situation, about your circumstance in life. See, circumstances and situations in life are all subject to change. But you need to understand this. With the support of your words and you confessing what's happened to you and talking about it and saying it every day, dwelling on it, it may establish those things in your life forever. And you don't want that. So we're talking about confessing the Word of God and how it can change the situation in your life. Now, on the other broadcast, we were dealing with number four uh, of why confession works. It keeps the answer before you. Well, let's just list them all. Number one was it causes faith to come. Number two, you sow a seed in the kingdom. And number three, it renews your mind to the Word of God to where you get to thinking like God thinks in His Word. And when you begin to think like God thinks, it's going to change things around your house. The first thing it's going to do is change your attitude. <laughs> and then uh, number four, keeps the answer before you. Now, uh, I want to deal just a little more with that on this broadcast. In, we'll find in 2 Corinthians that the Apostle Paul makes a statement. And let me show you how he is... He is uh, not, uh, he's not avoiding the negative, but he's uh, accentuating the positive and eliminating the negative. You remember that old song. Some of you are old enough to remember it. Accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative. Well, that's what the Word of God does. If you uh, put the accent on the Word of God instead of what's happening to you in life. Now, here's the way Paul said it in the Second Corinthians chapter 4. He says, For God, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, has shined into our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power of God is of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Now, I want, you to show, I want to show you how Paul puts a balance in this thing. Now, when you start talking about confessions, I've had people to say, <laughs> they say, well, now, you, Brother Caps, you just lying if you say it any other way than the way it is. Well, now, Paul is, is admitting that he's had problems here. But, but let me point out something. It's all right to tell somebody the problem, for, get them to pray and agree with you to change it. But you should not make a daily confession out of the problem because that keeps the problem before you. In fact, Mark 11, 24 says, What things soever you desire, when you pray, now listen to it, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. What things soever you desire. What is it you desire? You don't desire the problem, do you? Then don't pray the problem. This is one of the major mistakes that, that I made for years. I prayed the problem every day. Lord, I prayed it's not working out, things getting worse, and some dumb prayer like that, you know, that just opens the door to the devil. And uh, finally, the Lord spoke to me one morning and said, what are you doing? It kind of insulted me. I thought he ought to know I'm praying. And he said, no, you're complaining. He said, first of all, I'd appreciate you quit coming to me and telling me what the devil said and calling it praying. Now, see, I was keeping the problem before me every day. I'd say, Lord, I have this problem. I have this. This is that. I don't have, I need the finances. I need more land to farm and this, that, the other. I'm, I'm quoting the problem over and over and over. And I had great faith in the problem. But to tell you the truth, folks, I didn't have any faith in the answer to the problem. And that was, we should have been calling things that are not as though they were. And I was calling things that were as though they were. Now, let me show you how there's a fallacy in this, that most people think that they're doing what they ought to do when they're calling it like it is. 
they talk the problem because they say, well, it's true, I have the problem. Well, that may be a present fact, all right, in your life, but it's not the thing to do for this reason. Faith cometh by hearing, and it comes more quickly by hearing yourself, hearing your voice say what, the, what uh, God says, or on the other hand, the negative side, if you hear yourself saying what the devil says and talking the problem. Now, if you talk what is, and you talk what is happening to you, and you hear it over and over and over, what are you hearing? You're hearing the problem over and over. Even when you pray, and you pray the problem. I know some of you are doing that because I did it for years, but I'm, I'm trying to point out to you that you have to get off of that because that's not the, what the Word said to do. What things soever you desire, you don't de desire the problem. You desire the answer, so pray the answer instead of the problem. Thank God there is abundance, no lack. Somebody said, yeah, but I don't have abundance. Well, call it. See, that's the reason you call for things is because you don't have them. Now, that's a biblically sound principle of the Bible. It's called calling things that are not. You find that's the way God taught Abraham faith. He taught Abraham to call, Abraham to call things that were not as though they were until they were. Now, how would you ever change anything in life that's happening to you if you didn't say it different from the way it was by the principle that Jesus gave us in Mark 11, 23. Whosoever shall say to the mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea. Now let me ask you something. Was the mountain cast into the sea when he said to say that? No, they were looking at the mountain. Now that mountain represents a problem in your life. It wasn't cast into the sea. It was there. It was physically there. But he said, say to it, you will be cast into the sea. And he said, if you doubt not in your heart, in other words, if you're not undecided in your heart, but believe what you're saying will come to pass, he shall have, what shall he have? He'll have whatsoever he saith. Now, notice that. Now, go on to verse 24, Mark 11, 24. Therefore, what things will ever Now, when you find the word therefore, find out what it's there for. Because of that faith principle. You can have what you say, if you believe and doubt not in your heart, therefore it'll work when you're praying. So if you pray in the problem, you're going to receive the problem. If you pray in the answer, you'll receive the answer. Because you see, the very thing you pray, you're going to have greater faith in. Now some people develop fear, doubt, and unbelief through unscriptural praying. <laughs> now I'm going to say that again. Some people develop doubt, fear, and unbelief through unscriptural praying. They are praying the problem. Now, what happens when you pray the problem over and over, day in and day out, and day in, you keep in the problem before you, you have the, not the foggiest idea of what the answer is. Well, the Word of God is the answer. So you just simply go to the Word of God. Now, this is the way the Lord taught me to do this over 20 years ago. He said, you'd be better off to spend a week, a month, a year in the Word of God, find out what I said about it, and begin to proclaim what I said about it, develop your faith in the promise of God, then pray for it, then you'll receive it. Now, folks, when I started doing that, I got more prayers answered in two weeks than I had answered in the previous 20 years all put together because I was keeping the uh, problem before me and not the answer. And some of you are doing the same thing. And the Spirit of God, I didn't even intend to get on to this, but it's for somebody watching this broadcast, and you need to get a hold of this and start calling for what the promise of God says instead of talking about what is. You can change what is. Uh, the Apostle Paul makes this statement in, in 1 Corinthians. He said, God has chosen things that are not. What's that mean? Not manifest, to bring to naught, reduce to zero, things that are manifest. Well, there's spiritual forces in the Word of God. God's Word is filled with faith, and that, that faith will get on the inside of you. If you quote God's Word and deal with God's Word, keep it in your mouth. That's why I told Joshua what he did. Let not the book of the law depart out of your mouth. In other words, keep saying it. Regardless of what happens to you in life, I challenge you to say what God's Word says about you. Don't utter the words that your carnal mind picks up from the negative forces around you and produces fear, because fear-filled words will produce more fear. Faith-filled words will produce more faith, and God's Word is filled with faith. 
My, my, my. I, I didn't even get to 2 Corinthians there, did I? Let's, let's read it. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. Uh, well, we did get to it, but we didn't finish reading it. Paul said, We're troubled on every si side, but not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. He said, I'm having problems, all right, but I'm not in despair. I'm not distressed. I'm not in despair. See, he, he is accentuating the positive to eliminate the negative thinking. He said, yeah, that was present uh, uh, a fact is what happened to me, present fact in my life, but I'm not in despair. Notice his attitude. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Now, some of you, you go to suffer persecution. Lord, why me? And you have a pity party. <laughs> and that will never produce faith. But the Word of God will produce faith. Keep the answer before you. He said, we're persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Now, listen to this. Bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus might be manifest in our bodies. Now, what in the world would that mean? Bearing about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus. In other words, Jesus died to deliver us. He died and, and suffered stripes on his back just before he died for healing. He said, I am bearing about in my body the results of the dying of the Lord Jesus. Remember, they stoned Paul and left him for dead. Now, folks, when they, the Jews stoned you and left you for dead, you can rest assured you were dead. <laughs> and uh, they stood around and, and prayed, probably in the Holy Ghost, and he rose up the next day and went into Derby. So he, he is bearing in his body the results of the dying of the Lord Jesus, which delivered him from the authority of darkness, translated him into the kingdom of a dear son of God. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Now, in Paul's day, I mean, it was a life and death situation when you was preaching among the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah and so on. And, and Paul kept getting in trouble when he went to the Jews, and God told him to go to the Gentiles. He kept going back to the Jews and got his head beat bloody every time he did. And, uh, but he finally learned something. He said uh, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Now listen to his next statement. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Now where was this written? This is written in Psalms 116, verse 8 through 10, where David said, I believed and therefore have I spoken. Paul said, we also believe and therefore speak. Now see, over here he is... He is making a confession that we're not in despair, we're not in distress, but he admits, I'm troubled on every side. I've been troubled on every side. Now, he's given this for information to the people in Corinthians that he's writing to. He's not making it as a confession. You understand that? See, it's all right to tell people that you have a problem, you want them to, to pray with you and... and uh, and get in agreement that it'll be changed. And so Paul is telling them, these things did occur, but I'm not in despair. In other words, he accentuates the positive. Folks, you can't get any more positive than the Word of God. The most positive book on the planet Earth, the Bible. And uh, sometimes people try to make it negative, but it's not. We having the same spirit of faith, According as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. What we believe, we speak, and what we speak, we believe. It's a vicious cycle, or it's a wonderful cycle. It's like a dynamo. The faster it goes, the faster it can go. The more you speak it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you speak it. So if you're speaking the Word of God, it, it's producing faith. If you're speaking the words of the devil, it's producing fear, doubt, and unbelief, and you'll lose all faith and confidence in the Word of God and believe that God is not able to supply your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. <clears throat> now, uh, it keeps the answer before you. Now we're going to go to number five, why confession of the Word of God works. It changes the heart. And let's look in the book of Proverbs. In chapter, chapter 4 and verse uh, 20. My son, attend to my words. Now, now, watch this. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. 
don't let them depart from your eyes. In other words, that means to meditate the Word, give thought to it, the same thing he could old Joshua, don't let the book of the law depart out of your mouth. Meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that's written therein. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then thou shalt have good success. You'll observe to do it. In other words, you'll see yourself doing it. If you're talking the Word of God, you'll see yourself doing it. It'll get on the inside of you. It'll be conceived in your heart, and then it will manifest itself in you. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Now, how do you keep the Word of God in the midst of your heart? By speaking it, by proclaiming it. Now, when you went to school, at least some of you, I, I can remember it. I don't know how they teach it now. You'd quote the multiplication tables, the whole class when I, that I was in when I remember specifically in the third grade. We'd stand up and quote multiplication tables until, you know, we knew them by heart. <laughs> now, what does that mean? That means it got on the inside of you. It really becomes a part of you. So, you know, you don't have to sit down and figure out what four times four is. Why? Because it's inside you. You know that you know, you know, you know. And then somebody comes along and said, yeah, but four and four is sometimes 12. Oh, no, it's not. How do I know that? I have too much knowledge to believe that. And see, you ought to be that same way on the Word of God. Somebody come along and said, well, yeah, I know the Bible says that, but it won't work. Why, well, you just throw a fit if the Word abides in you. Well, sure it'll work. It's the Word of God. It is true. Now, whether you ever experience it or not, it's still true. But if you keep that Word in your heart, now, how do you do that? See, David tapped into it. Said, he said, my tongue is as the pen of a ready writer. The words you speak with your mouth get into your heart. He says, for they are life to those that find them. Now, there's life in every word of God. They're life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now, folks, this will tell you why some folks that are always chronically ill have you ever noticed that they want to talk about their sickness and where they hurt and who died with this and who died with that? And, and most of the time, first thing they want to do in the morning is read the obituary and see who died. Now, folks, that's in the negative stream of life. He says, keep them in the midst of thy heart. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart for their life to those that find them and health. Now, there's a number one by the word health here in my Bible over here in the center column reference. It says, our medicine to all their flesh. In other words, this Word is medicine to your flesh. It's healing to your flesh. And uh, quoting and speaking the Word of God will change your heart. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, or one translation says the forces of life. Now, you have to realize that God's Word is an eternal force. It has the DNA of God in it. And I mean it works, and it works every time you work it. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips far from thee. In other words, don't talk crooked speech. Don't talk all kinds of things. Laughed, I thought I'd die, dying to go, going to die if I don't. No, keep the Word of God before you. Thank God that tickled me to life. To life. I laughed till I knew I'd live forever, because a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Now I want us to go over here to the Old Testament, to Second Kings. You'll find in the fourth chapter the story of Elisha and the Shunam, Shunammite woman. Now, Elisha was passing through the place where this Shunam, Shunammite woman lived, and uh, she said, let us make us a little chamber where the prophet of God can come, and when he comes by, he can, he can go in and rest. And, of course, they did that. And uh, he prophesied over this woman that she'd have a child. See, she is barren. She didn't have a child. Well, of course, she had a child, and... Uh, then it came to pass that on a certain day he was out in the field with his father, and uh, he cried, my head, my head. Evidently, he had a heat stroke or something to that effect. And she car he carried him to his mother, and uh, he sat on her knee until noon, and he died. Now, I want you to notice the Scripture says that. Verse 20 says in uh, 2 Kings 4, And when he had taken him, and brought him to his mother. He sat on her knees until noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door upon him, and went out. And she called to her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men, 
and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore will thou go unto him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. Now, there was no spiritual significance in this. It's not the new moon. It's not the Sabbath. He says, Why are you going to the man of God? <laughs> now, listen to what she said. And she said, It shall be well. In fact, uh, there's number six here by that uh, phrase, and it says over here, it says, Peace. It shall be well. In other words, she's saying all is well. Now, let, now get this, folks. This woman's son is dead. He is graveyard dead. She knows he's dead. And her husband says, why are you riding to the prophet of God? She said, all is well. All is peace. How could she have this peace when her son is dead? How could she say, all is well when the son is dead? Now, somebody would say, this woman's lying. No, this woman has peace on the inside of her. Why? Because she has the word of the prophet that if, the, if he prophesied that God would give her a child, God didn't give her a child to die of a heat stroke before he gets grown. She just simply wouldn't receive it. Now, see, this actually was a fact that happened. The Bible describes it, exactly how it happened. He sat on her knee until noon and died. But now notice her mental attitude. She's got a hold of something. And folks, I'm telling you, if you get a hold of this, you get a hold of the Word of God, it'll change your attitude in life. It'll change in every situ situation and circumstance that you face. It'll change your attitude. It keeps the answer before you. Now, that saddled a donkey, and she's riding to the prophet of God. Now, when she gets there, uh, Elisha said to, to Gehazi, uh, said, go, there, there comes a Shunammite said, go talk to her, said, ask her, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? Now, folks, are you ready for this? And she said, it is well. Now, for those that would say, you just have to say it like it is, if you say anything else, you're just lying about it. What are you going to do with this woman? I mean, this woman has this in her until you couldn't beat it out of her with a ball bat. She knows that all is well. She has peace of God. Her son is dead. Why? This woman has the Word of God in her heart. Now, she didn't hear me teach on faith and confession, but you see, she had enough of the Word of God till she knew that I'm not turning loose of what God gave me. And when you get acquainted with what given, God has given you in the Word of God, then the the, the, your carnal mind or the devil comes up trying to get you to believe something else, just don't receive it. Just say, thank God all is well in the name of Jesus, based on the authority of the Word of God. You're calling for what you don't have. She's calling for what she doesn't have. She said, all is well. Our peace, there was no peace in the natural, but she called for it. Now, you know the story, or if you don't, well, let me tell it to you real quick. He told Gehazi, said, something's happened to the, to the child, and the Lord's hid it from me. And the woman wouldn't even tell him about it. So he said, take my mantle and run and lay it upon the child. Now, see, the woman had, had the wisdom of God. She laid this child on the prophet's bed. Now, why did she do that? She knew that the prophet was anointed of God. He's anointed of God. And uh, so she lays the child that's dead on the sheet that he slept on, no doubt. And you remember in the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul uh, that handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from his body while he ministered and given to the sick and sent to the sick and evil spirits went out of them and sickness and disease departed from them. Now, it wasn't something Paul did, something God did by the anointing that the anointing that was on Paul surcharged those claws. Now, this woman, how did she know that? I don't know. She couldn't read Acts chapter 19, but she knew it in her spirit. So she, uh, she would not say that, she would not confess that the child is dead. Now, <laughs> that's pretty strong. Now, he gets there, and he lays the mantle upon the child. And when Elisha gets there, uh, he went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain, and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and laid himself upon the child, and put his mouth on his mouth, and his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child, and his 
flesh of the child wax warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. Raised from the dead. The anointing of God was in the prophet of God. He laid himself upon the child. He would not take no for an answer. He kept the answer before him. And this woman, it was her faith that kept this, this thing from being a, a funeral. And because of her faith, the prophet of God wouldn't give up. And you see that the, her son was raised from the dead. Now, folks, I'm telling you, if you keep the answer of God before you, it'll change your situation in life. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of bad situations out there. We're out of time, but before I leave, let me remind you that this week we're offering the book, my book called Faith and Confession. Now, folks, this is a faith manual. Uh, we deal with uh, all kinds of subjects in here. Uh, do you throw your medicine away when you get prayed for? Uh, faith and common sense. Uh, medicine won't heal you, won't keep you from getting healed, but it'll hold down the symptoms while you're believing for the healing. Your body will heal itself with all things being normal. This book is about a 300-page or 260-page uh, paperback. It's called Faith and Confession, How to Activate the Power of God in Your Life. Now, it'll, it'll answer probably 90% of all the questions you might have concerning faith and confession. Now, you've been watching the broadcast. You've missed a lot of the broadcast, I know, because I know you can't just sit down and watch it have the time every day to watch the broadcast. Uh, some of the things we talk about in this book, how the law of faith works, uh, how to receive God's provision, using wisdom when acting in faith, how doctors and medicine work together for healing. We have uh, the last chapter of this book is called Calling Things That Are Not. That's worth the price of the whole book. That's uh, offer number 2509. It's uh, Faith and Confession, $10. Now, it normally sells for 12 or more dollars, but uh, we're offering a special price for $10. Offer number 2509. Now, we have a toll-free order line. It's 1-877-396-9400. That's 1-877-396-9400. Or you can write to me, Charles Capps, Box 69, England, Arkansas, zip code 72046. And ask for offer number 2509, Faith and Confession, uh, $10. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and the law of faith works when you put it to work. Jesus is Lord, and he is coming soon, and don't you ever forget it. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, ebooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.